All right, good morning everyone, or good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Welcome to May's Monthly Critique. I've got 20 images opened here on my laptop, and I'm going to work my way through each of these during this live image critique. So firstly, I want to say thank you to everyone that submitted an image. I know it's not easy putting yourself out there, but it, we do do it anonymously so that um, you know, there's no watermarks or logos on the images, they're not identifiable, or blah, blah, blah. So we try to, to do it nice and anonymously for those that are a little bit scared to put themselves out there. Um, but do you know what? If you don't mind letting people know which images is, is yours, then pop it into the comments if you've got any questions at all regarding what we're talking about and uh, discussing throughout the critique, pop those into the comments. Garrett's behind the camera. He's going to let me know uh, if there are any questions. We've got a good morning, Kelly, already. Hi. That is Holly. Uh, hi, Holly. I can see Facebook user. I can't see your name if you do leave a comment. Um, if you want me to know who it is, and I do look up, but at the, at the end of the day, I'm basically going to be staring at my screen and Garrett's going to be letting me know um, when I can come up for air. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk a lot. For those of you that are new to this process, uh, monthly image critiques are something that I do love to provide here in this community. I love being able to go through the photographs and really um, you know, talk about all the different elements and how they could be improved or what could be done to sort of take it to that next level. The reason I do it is because I don't always have time to come through the group and offer CC on every single image that is shared in there. So this is my way of being able to, to do one big critique. And even if you haven't submitted a photograph, these image critiques are invaluable to everyone because they pick things up that you may not have seen or been aware of. So I do this from a place of 17 years of experience and knowledge from the photography industry. I have studied photography at college, I have a diploma of photography, I have been judging print competitions all over the world for the past eight, ten years and entering them myself as well, so learning a lot about the process and what to look for in terms of technical excellence. Even if you don't have any ambition to enter competitions or you've never done it before, this is not about a competition, this is about using everything that I've learned throughout those processes to talk about the different elements within an image uh, that you know come together to make it one amazing photograph. So in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is use my little Wacom pen here and I'm going to um, mark up the photograph and talk about lighting, I'm going to talk about composition, I'm going to talk about um, exposure, focal length, I will talk about camera angles, I'm also going to talk about editing techniques so um, and show some little tips along the way as well. So yeah, if you are joining us, let us know where you're from. We've got lots of people there so far, this is fantastic. Right, I'm going to get started because we have got 20 photographs to get through and uh, yeah, I hope I hope you get a, get a lot out of it, get what you need. Okay, here comes the first image. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Look at these beautiful girls. You know, the first thing that's really striking here for me is is the, the expression and that gaze and the connection with the camera. I think the photographer has done a really great job of, of getting that, that there just to be that main impact. And if that was your intention, you've nailed it. Uh, the second thing that I'm looking at here is just this beautiful color palette. I'm loving the, the browns and then they come forward to the, the different sort of colors, those muted tones in the little skirts there. The girls are matching in the outfit. Um, and yeah, this is just lovely. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of zoom in here and have a little bit of a look. I'm also taking um, notice of the histogram over here. So you can see there's a lot of very dark information um, right down the, the black end of that histogram. So what we'll do is we'll take it into curves and have a look at where we might be possibly losing some detail. So with those two little black tops that they're wearing, um, if there is little detail and information in those black areas, when you go to print this, you're going to basically print a black blob on a screen, on a piece of paper. So let's open it up in curves and have a little look here at this information. So I can, move this little slider here but I'll show you a trick if you hold the option key in and then you move that slider you'll start to see a guide there as to where you're potentially losing information 
So right now we're really pushing it in terms of the, the black areas on those tops. We've definitely sort of lost it here around the shadows um, where the top meets the arm and then obviously where they come together in there. But we're also sort of t losing it in, um, in, in overall in those black tops throughout. So it's going to print very, very little detail. Um, unfortunately. So you do have to be careful not only about controlling your highlights and not overexposing those, but when you're going for that really dark moody look in a photograph, you've got to make sure that you are controlling those shadows as well. So that just means that you would have to lift your exposure up a little bit in, with that black. And if you want to create that that beautiful dark background, um, this is where I would potentially have them moved further away from that background, bring up that exposure just a little bit in camera, um, or potentially um, you know, adds a little bit of fill light, I suppose, down the underneath um, to, to help sort of spread some light into those areas. But I, I do love the direction of that light. You're just gonna have to control those, those black areas a little bit more. All right, so I'll come out of there and let's have another little look here. So I, what I can also see, um, if you were going to, um, you know, uh, print this photograph or, or sort of, you know, have ambition to do something with it, like entering it into a competition, you would probably have to pay just a little bit more attention to the detail in the skin as well. You can see that some sort of skin smoothing um, action or plug-in has been played over the skin because it is really, really quite sort of soft there. There is some texture and detail, but it's been really smooth. And sometimes what that does is it creates a little bit of banding in terms of the tone throughout the skin. So I can see here that there's just a little bit of banding kind of happening around the, um, the upper part of the arm there. And there's some cooler tones kind of sneaking in as well. So trying to keep that consistency in skin tone throughout the entire image and just being careful not to over process the skin that will create a little bit of a, a shift in banding. Oh, sorry, shifting in color, which will create banding. Get my words out. I haven't had my second coffee yet. <laughs> All right, and then just these little sort of attention to little lumps and bumps um, around those smooth areas. When it's really smooth around some areas, come in and tidy up some of those other little areas as well. But yeah, I'm being you know a little picky here. I think this is lovely. Another thing to kind of be careful of is the posing of fingers. So at the moment where this front arm is coming across here, um, where the fingers are bent, but you can't see where the fingers kind of continue on. So I would have just had her sort of open up that hand a little bit to see more of the fingers as they come around there, or even have her sort of holding that elbow, sort of cupping cupping that hand up underneath that elbow so that you could see it, so that you're not missing half of the fingers. And then just over here, we're sort of starting to lose those fingers there as well. So maybe just repositioning hands next time, um, but yeah. It, it is just such a beautiful po like um, a beautiful photograph of their faces and the connection and the detail is really truly beautiful. So just a few little things to, to control there and you'll be you know looking at this from a whole new with whole new fresh eyes and just be careful of the detail in the hair there you do want to keep. Um, all of that detail because you've got it all up the top here where the lights obviously hitting the top of the head But you're just losing a little bit of that detail there And I know when we're working with one light source and you can see that the lights coming from this direction because of the catch light there and some of the shadows so The little one over here you can see some of that detail here on this side of her hair um, But you may just need to bring in just a little bit of a reflector on this side to bounce some of that light over into those shadowy areas on the opposite side but yeah, I do love that color palette. Thank you for submitting that. All right. Oh. Little awake, fresh baby. Look at that face. All righty. So this is a really natural placement of the baby. You know, the baby's just been placed down. It's very, um, it's very, it's a, got a very fresh look. You know, it's not posed and, and overly styled and things like that. There's a few things to consider when you are trying to come in and get one of these sort of close-up captures. Um, at the moment, 
where the, the shape of the fabric, and I'm actually really enjoying how the shape of the fabric comes around and frames the face. I think that, that that's actually, you know, a really great thing that you've spotted there within this. The one thing to be careful of is when you are cropping your images, whether it be in camera or in post-production, try not to crop through, um, you know, legs and, and arms and things like that, sort of body parts. If you want a close-up, what I would have done is really exaggerated that, um, that crop in camera and come in really close and use that information to, to frame that face. So you could get rid of all of that, that um, I suppose, that, that busyness that's going on around the baby and make it all about the face and, and really draw your eye in there. All right, so let's go back here. The other things to consider when you are, um, you know, positioning a baby on different surfaces and things like that is this particular background here has got a pattern to it. And we can sort of see it a little bit over here and we can't really see it here. So I probably with this would have gone with a background that matched the, the wrap a little bit more or used a wrap that was of the same color here. But I do love this beautiful creamy colored wrap. And if you'd used a, creamer, a creamy sort of background to match the wrap, then it would be less distracting. And you'd find that um, the your eye would just be completely drawn into that beautiful little face. So there's another little tip there when you are choosing different fabrics and things like that to style with. Um, what, what's happened at the top here is I'm not quite sure whether you've cropped that in, um, in post-production and sort of left a little bit of the cropped outside, I suppose, the frame of the image, the, the size of the frame. on that one does say screenshot. Oh, okay, so this is so a screenshot. So this might be sure. why the resolution is, is a little poor. Be careful, um, you know, when you're sending photographs in for things like this, you know, just, just crop it to a smaller size, 6x4, 300 dpi, s export it, save for web, um, and you'll be able to create, you know, a, a, a decent sized file to be able to send us that would be suitable for this. The other little thing is there's a little bit of a, a thread being pulled here in the fabric. You know, when you're using fabric, attention to detail is always going to be very important. Give that a little bit of a pull and remove that gather. Trying to get rid of that in post could be a bit tricky because you've got lots of um, texture in terms of the, um, the, the weave of that fabric and uh, light and shadow. The other thing that I want to touch on is that lighting. It's really quite sort of bright and harsh as it's coming through and it's creating some you know, some quite sort of heavy shadows and things like that here, but the direction of it, if you have a look, it's highlighting the bottom of that nose. So that light source is coming sort of straight in and lighting the bottom of that nose. What you want to do is look for the light so that it angles down and it's coming sort of down and falling across the baby's face. That's going to give you um, a lot more flattering highlights and shadows around all of those little features. Because what's happening is where the skin um, on the baby's face here comes up and it's higher, the light's going to hit that and then it's going to create some unwanted shadows in these terms, in these lines. So it's, it's sort of borderlining that ghoul's lighting. Um, so be careful with that lower, lower light. The, the brightest part of the image is that bottom of that baby's nose. And then those skin tones, they're really sort of peachy and red and pink in there. So removing some of those, um, but try to get that exposure right in camera. It looks like the skin tones have been really worked, really pushed. So if you underexpose your photographs in camera, what's going to happen is when you try to light them, you're going to mess up all of those beautiful skin tones. So try to get that exposure perfect in camera. So placing the skin tones within the histogram where they should be, and then you won't have to do so much in post-production to get those beautiful creamy skin tones. But uh, controlling that exposure is going to really benefit you here. So yeah, a few little things to kind of think of, but keep going and I, you know, keep sort of exploring just that beautiful organic way that you've wrapped the fabric around that baby's face. Alrighty, little twinnies, look at these. I love these little twin photos when they're holding hands and looking at each other. It's too cute. Alrighty. 
So again, I'm having a look here at the histogram and that information is really, really dark. When, when we do look at um, a histogram uh, on the back of our camera, which we should have up all the time when we're shooting, it's going to give us an indication as to where all the information is sitting. So very quickly, these are your highlights, these are your shadows, and these are your mid-tones. These babies have beautiful creamy skin. I can see it where the skin, where the light is hitting the elbow over here. So what's happened is you've over underexposed this image in um, in camera, and you've lost a lot of information in this dark background where you can see all of this information here sitting um, within the frame. So if I just come around here, and what I'm going to do with the eyedropper is I'm just going to click, so you can see it's sitting down here that information. Now I come up, those skin tones on the back of the baby's arms, obviously they're in the shadowy areas so they're going to be darker. And then over here we've got, you know, some skin tones on the arm here. We've got some skin tones. You can see how it's moving across and sitting roughly here. This is this information. And then up here in the head, the information in that hair is really dark. And again down here it's, it's very much underexposed. If I hold the Alt key in and we use the guide, you can see where you've lost all of that information. So it's just going to print a black blob. So this is where your exposure in camera is, is going to have to be something that you focus on as well as the, the lighting in terms of, um, I mean, and I can't assume what type of light source that you've used here, but um, it does look like it's sort of, you know, one, one light coming in um, quite low and it's hitting the side of this baby down here and here and then it's obviously hitting that little knee here and here and here and then it's coming up into this baby's face here and it's missing this baby's face so what i would do and if we just come over to this little camera here garrett if if these are the babies and they're laying here on on this flat surface the light source at the moment in this particular photo is down really low so it's coming um, you know, directly out and straight onto the side of that baby. What you need to do when you're photographing twins is have that light up a little higher so that it falls down on an angle across them, making sure that their heads are obviously closest to that light source. But then what you need to do is have some form of reflector on this side that's going to bounce light back into your subject, if that makes sense. Um, and I'll do it this way so you can see. So if you're shooting from above like this, you want to make sure that that light is coming in a little bit higher and falling across, and then you've got some form of reflector over here that's going to bounce some light back into the darker shadowy areas, and especially when you are photographing two faces that are coming together, because obviously if the light is on one side, it's going to light one face more than it's going to light the other face. So you've got to work out how you're going to direct that light. For me, what I like to do when I'm photographing babies like this is have um, a large reflector over here that's going to bounce light back in or um, have my light above here coming down and falling across both of them if they're side by side. So it's coming down and feathering across from the top of the head down and that's going to give you more even consistent light across both babies. So you do have to be very, very aware of the direction and the angle of that, um, that light in terms of the amount of light um, that is going to fall across the babies. So you may need to feather that light as well. So yeah, controlling that light. Otherwise, the, the, the posing, I mean, at the moment it looks, um, it looks fine. However, I can't see a lot of this baby because of the exposure and the lighting. So I can see one little leg coming down here, but I can't see the other leg. Um, but the placement of the hands here is quite lovely as well. So yeah, a few things to kind of consider there, but if you're going for that darker, moodier light, it's more about just controlling that light, um, you know, as much as you possibly can, and, and you're going to see big changes. But that's something that I teach in my lighting class. My lighting tutorial explains natural light, continuous light, and strobe and how to get the perfect exposure, how to direct control the intensity of the light, the amount of light that's coming out to fall across your subject to get the results that you're looking for. That's why we created that product because we see so many times the, you know, you might get the posing right, you might get the styling right, but you just 
tend to fall short a little bit there in terms of the, the lighting. And as photographers, that's the most important aspect um, of what we do, capturing light. All right, let's move on. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful mummy. Okay, so this is such a beautiful landscape scene. You've got this gorgeous outdoor area. Gosh, I'd be shooting there every day if I possibly could. It's, um, it's absolutely beautiful. I love the movement in her hair and um, you know her posing is really quite lovely and the expression on her face is very gentle which goes with the styling as well. Um, alrighty, let's have a little look here. The one thing that probably is just jumping out to me um, here is when you are in a scene like this in a landscape and there is quite a strong horizon line in the background. All right, here we go, this is our horizon line and it's a beautiful outdoor scene and I love this overcast kind of windy um, movement that we can see here. The, the thing is when we're shooting with a strong horizon line like that and it cuts through the back of the head, what that does is it actually takes away from that, um, that I suppose that connection with your subject's face and that gaze. The thing is what you want to do is try to place the head in either you know, in down here, in all of that beautiful green surrounding, which means you've got to get up higher. But unfortunately, what that what happens when you're photographing a pregnant woman, you can tend to make her look a lot shorter um, from that higher perspective. So my advice in this particular scene and scenario is to just slightly come down a little lower in your um, in your position, your camera angle, and photograph her so her head is higher in the frame, so that that horizon line sort of coming down um, here. And then what you can do is, I'm not quite sure what focal length that this was shot at though, but you've got all this beautiful sort of foreground here. And there's a little bit of detail in the background, but there's really nothing there that's adding to the composition of this photograph. So what I would do is shoot with a much longer focal length and a wider aperture that's going to increase the depth there and really blur out that background to soften that horizon line. So you could come back a little bit further, you know, zoom in with a longer focal length, come down a little lower, place that head up a bit higher, and um, and you're going to make her really stand out in this frame. It's it would it's going to create so much more impact. So yeah, but the styling scene absolutely beautiful. Exposure looks lovely. Just be careful here with the way that that arm is coming forward. Um, we're tending to lose that hand. So my advice, um, and I'll just kind of stand so you can see that part of my body. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry Garrett, I'm no, putting right. you under the pump here. Let's do this. Okay. I'm, I'm capable. I know. I'm, well. Which arm? I'm, I'm looking at the camera but it's back to front. There we so go. So if I'm, if I'm holding my, my belly like she is, like that, and that arm's coming forward, you can see I'm losing my hand. So to create shape with a pregnant woman and that beautiful round belly that they've got, my advice is to pull that hand back so you can see it. And then what that does is, we'll see if you can see here, see now there's a triangle um, in this area. <laughs> That's going to give you more shape. So you want to pull that elbow back and in doing so, it'll sit, you'll be able to bring that shoulder back so it's not sort of coming forward so much there. But if you pull, pull that shoulder back just a little bit, then that arm will be able to come down here and you'll be able to see all of those beautiful fingers. So just remember, um, hand back, elbow back to create that, you know, that little triangle of shape there and uh, you'll, you'll notice a big change as well. And with this arm here, this little hand just kind of creeping across and it's not really connected to anything, you're just sort of turning that, that back shoulder um, forward a little more so you can see more of that, that arm sort of coming down so that you know that that hand is obviously connected to something. But yeah, otherwise beautiful, love the colour tone, the editing has been done beautifully as well. Kelly, everyone is loving your little mini setup. Can you please tell them where you got it from? <laughs> they seem to love it. Okay, iCraft, you all know this. This is a little USB. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Down, down, down there, here. there we go. Yep. yep. So this is just a little USB. Um, 
And let me put my torch on here. I'll just brighten that screen a little bit for you. There we go. There we go. So USB stuck to a mini tripod. This is just a plastic container that I hot glued a bit of leather to. A little baby Perfect I made. posing bag. <laughs> yeah, this is my posing bag. And then this is just a, a reading light and I made a soft box to go over the top of it so I could show you the, the direction of that light. And I, I was commenting on a post this morning in the group about how we all learn differently. Some people can read and learn, some people have to visually see and learn, and some people have to do and learn. So I, I like being able to do this because for me, I'm a very visual learner, and I, I, it, it just helps me understand. So for those of you that are visual learners like myself, um, that's why I created this, so I can and help explain direction a little bit more and intensity of light. But yeah, it is such a great way to, to sort of look at those different camera angles. <laughs> Alrighty, and that, yeah, I just made it. <laughs> I think okay. everyone just loves it. Oh, hi everyone. Anyway, I'm getting a little little carried away here. Let's keep going. I did like your little posing tutorial. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not pregnant. For anyone that, that it's just, it's uh, ISO weight gain. <laughs> Blame Alrighty. it on the corona. <laughs> Um, gosh, this is just stunning, isn't it? Look at this beautiful backdrop and this gorgeous little girl sitting there um, and this beautiful dress. So I do love seeing, you know, creative portraits like this and, and this, this really sort of dark, sort of moody, styled uh, setup. I am familiar with this backdrop and I love these backdrops. They're just gorgeous, but this is a really fantastic use of it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm just sort of, you know, mesmerized by by all of the you know the beautiful simple colors and the styling here. Few little things that I'm I'm sort of picking up on. Um, first of all, when I look at her face, she kind of looks a little forced in terms of the pose. So um, you've got this beautiful soft scene, and it's very girly. It's it's very delicate, but she looks quite forced in terms of. You know, she wouldn't naturally sit there with her hands by her face. Um, and then when I look down here at this beautiful softness, her toes are really forced in terms of pointing. So maybe, and then you've got a little toe kind of sneaking out here. So it sort of drew me straight down that straight foot and, and how sort of um, stiff, I suppose, that looks in terms of that point. Because when you want to create something dreamy, the pose has to be relaxed, it has to be comfortable and it has to look natural. So when I'm looking to pose um, a little girl like this, perhaps, um, you know, a hand maybe sort of down and, and one hand just resting on her decolletage um, would be a little bit more natural or even just her hand sort of gently sort of moving through her hair as well she's got that gorgeous hair but you want to give it a little bit of life a little bit of movement and not make it so sort of um, stiff so if you could have sort of one hand if you look at the lines of the dress when we talk about leading lines in composition you've got this beautiful dress and you've really emphasized um, you know the the way that it falls and moves her little arm and hand could actually um, follow those same lines in terms of leading lines that that way it would complement the pose so you could potentially have the hand sort of come the arm coming down and following these lines and just the hand resting here um, and then this hand sort of just sort of moving through the hair so you get that beautiful soft gaze but um, it's got movement it's got life about it if that makes sense um, and then the foot I do love that her little um, her little legs are crossed there that's just gorgeous but we are losing this leg and then we're just seeing those little sneaky toes peek through there what would be lovely here is to sort of have something that this foot here could sit on to bring that leg up a little higher and then you might not have to have those legs crossed to create that shape we also can't see what she's sitting on so sometimes having that connection it just sort of looks like she's kind of gravitating there having a something that connects her to the background in that that seated pose um, really benefits the viewer as well. The um, the other thing when we are using this beautiful sort of single directional light coming in there, be very careful what that light is going to light first. 
in terms of the brightest part of the image. So if we have a little look here, the back of her hands are a lot brighter than her face. So what you need to do is control that in post, either lighten her face because it is quite dark compared to the tones in her arms and the hands. Um, you either need to, to have that light, um, you know, sort of a little bit more prominent on her face and then bring down the back of the hands. But obviously if you were to change the posing, you would eliminate that. This part of the body is quite fair. You can see it. like even on me, on the camera. It's fairer than my face because it never sees the sun. <laughs> um, so it is going to become brighter naturally. So that's where changing the pose and then controlling that possibly, if you don't change the pose a little bit more in post-production would uh, reduce those highlights. So a few little things there to consider. The other thing is these cooler magenta tones that are sort of creeping in down here around the foot area and the bottom of that material. So. Um, sort of evening out that tone. But I do love the, the styling of it and she's just gorgeous. I would love to see more of that beautiful hair, even sort of if it was kind of coming out in this direction because her hair moves like the petals. So you've got all these beautiful petals over here and, and they've got all that beautiful curly wavy shape. And then when we come in, you know, she's got these beautiful curly waves in the hair but we're losing them in the background. So possibly bringing them around here and, and making her hair a bit more of the feature and then what that would do is balance out what's happening over here, over to this side of the image because this side of the image is quite dark um, because obviously the light's coming in from over here. So we're losing a lot of the detail in those flowers there in the background. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I do love it and I want you to continue really exploring these beautiful fine art portraits because, um, you know, they're, they're just timeless, they're gorgeous. Alrighty. <laughs> I love the way you've used a blanket to create a frame around the baby here. And you know, you've got that, that baby, the, the frame in the center of the image here when we talk about um, composition, you know, it's, it's balanced from from one side to the next. There's a few little things. Um, when we do position a baby like this, let's bring up our crop tool and our rule of thirds. So, like I mentioned, you know, you've gone with the center um, composition there, which is fantastic for the, the circular shape of the, the material there, but the baby's sort of not centered within the frame. So when we're framing the baby, we need to make sure that, you know, the, the baby is the main focus. So the composition basically is about the baby and then we add all of these other elements around it to improve the composition. So what I tend to do is make sure that the baby is in, so let's have a look here. We'll, let's draw our rule of thirds. Okay. So at the moment you can see the baby's up the top, it, whilst it's in the center from one side to the next, um, it's not in the center of the frame here. So I would go about positioning the baby first here and then I would frame it with my wrap so it was nice and centered because it's just slightly off there. And with the direction of the baby being posed like that, next time try to think about, let's rotate this frame so bringing that baby around now in this direction. So what we've sort of done there, and um, oh, let me just get rid of these white lines very quickly. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why that's white there on the edge um, when submitted, but yeah, we'll ignore that that's there. But you can see now how that how the baby looks a little bit more balanced within the frame when it's not on an angle. You often feel like you've got to turn your head to look at it. So always think about how you're going to position the baby within your frame and then use the different styling elements around it to help complement that composition. Um, also, if you went a little bit further and you wanted to, to have a little bit more fun with the composition, try sort of having that head slightly off to the side um, in terms of the left hand side because our brain naturally reads from left to right and then you know you've got this little bit of a feature over here what happens is you start to kind of whoops 
um, then use your eye and the elements to lead you through the frame and that's going to be more complementing to, to your subject. The exposure and skin tones look, look good, the, uh, you know, your lighting's lovely and soft, the, the only thing would be just that posing and the position of the baby in the frame. Um, another thing to kind of consider is just keeping the blanket pulled nice and tight, clamping it so you avoid all of these things and things you don't need to worry about in post-production. But yeah, I would love to see a little bit more of that baby um, positioned there as well. Sometimes putting them flat on their back like this can be really hard to make them look curled up. So whenever I'm putting a baby down for the back pose, I do have it slightly turned to its side. So what I'll do is I will position the little hips and roll them to the direction that I want to create that curve, which is usually um, in that direction. But yeah, otherwise, great job. Alrighty. Love these beautiful purple colors here. All right, so baby looks really comfortable. It looks peaceful. Um, it's in the center of the prop, so great job with posing. Possibly in terms of posing, just tucking this little foot here back down in so you get your safe shot and then come back, tuck that little foot back down inside there so it's not sitting, so that fabric isn't sort of moving and cutting into um, as it comes around because it's a bit of a strong leading line. You know, it cuts in under there. You want to tuck it all in so it's that baby's all nice and and round there. The the one thing when I'm working with circular props um, is that sometimes when they hit the edge of your frame, it can create some distracting elements within the image. So we've got this beautiful baby. It's, it's the main focus of our image, don't get me wrong, but there are some distracting elements here that do take your eye away from this little baby. So when we think about our styling, you've got this gorgeous purple material in here. You've got a fluff and then a wrap. It's lovely, it goes well with the headband. And then you've got a bucket, a circular wooden bucket, and it's dark wood on the inside and it's white wood on the outside. And then you've got a white wood floor to match obviously the bucket. So I can see the intention there. What you would need to be careful with is when filling your prop, um, when you've got such a dark line like this, let's remove these reds, um, and they do hit the, the edge of the frame like this in terms of your crop, it's going to, it, it's so heavy and it's so dark compared to everything else in the frame that it's just going to draw your eye straight out of the frame. So this whole area here, I often say that the brightest area of the image is, is where you look, but sometimes when you've got a light image, the darkest area is what's going to pull you away if it's not meant to be there or it's not necessary. It's not adding to your composition. So all of these sort of dark areas are really standing out quite heavy. The one thing um, that I am noticing about the little baby is that the light that's sort of hitting this side of the baby's face is really quite flat in terms of shadow and, um, and density and tone. So you can see it's really all very similar in tone there and we're starting to lose some of those features. Over here you can see, you know, you've got little curves, you've got shape, you've got shadow that's, that's really defining all those features and, and making them more prominent. But over here with the way that, that the photos have been lit and also that been retouched, um, you do need to be very careful that you're not removing a lot of the detail that should be there. So my advice here is, to, to possibly sort of soften that light, feather it just a little bit more, and um, in post-production, try not to remove so much of those red skin tones, um, and try not to over-soften the skin as well when you are using different skin softening actions. The skin tone throughout the baby is very consistent, and whilst I say we want to try and, and make that tone um, consistent, be careful not to remove too much of it so that it looks flat. Um, you know, babies are meant to be pink, so add a little bit more sort of those pink tones back in there and try not to overdo it. Then when we have a look at the direction of light, you can see the little shadow here coming in in the nose, and it's kind of coming up there, that little shadow. I'll just highlight it. What I look for is the shadow to sort of come down in this direction. So at the moment, the light is coming across here. 
what you want is the light to come across here to create shadow that comes down and that's going to be so much more flattering because you can see these little highlights here underneath the nose we don't want to highlight underneath the nose we want to highlight on top of the nose and on top of the eye and create some beautiful shadows and depth here uh, and that's going to be more flattering so if the lights coming down here you're going to have some shadow here that's going to create depth you're going to have some shadow here that's going to create depth and then you're going to have more flattering shadows over here as that falls across the baby's face and when you're in a prop like this it's easy you just rotate that prop don't have to move the light just rotate the prop to watch where that little shadow falls across the face and if you are going to crop through like I said just make sure that you are covering all of those dark areas with the the fill that you're using inside your prop as well so using a little bit more purple to bring it up and, and cover all those dark areas so it's not so distracting but otherwise great pose um, you know you're so close with that with that styling um, it's just a few little things that you may not have seen Oh, hang on, I'll close that. Alrighty. Oh. These green tones, I am a big fan of green. Um, I am absolutely loving them. The, the way that the baby is positioned within the frame, I always say, have that head higher than the baby's body. Great job. Um, let's come back and bring up our composition in terms of our rule of thirds so you can see, you know, the baby's nice and balanced in the frame. What I would probably tend to do is have that baby down around those bottom two thirds. And that's just a matter of moving that camera angle um, and placing that baby down there. So you've got more background as opposed to the foreground. So I'll just do this to show you. So you bring that baby basically closer to the, the, the viewer. Um, you don't need all that information in front of the baby. I can see you've done a, you know, a good job trying to get that baby wrapped. The baby looks comfortable. It looks very um, peaceful. Potentially, what you could do is pop a little extra support here underneath that baby's head to kind of lift that face up a little higher. So it, at the moment, the face is kind of pointing in this direction, maybe having it pointing up a little more and tilting um, would give you a, a bit more um, of a better camera angle. So the other thing um, when we're trying to get those little legs tucked up, you know, adding some more supports and things like that underneath that bottom, the back looks a little flat here so I can see that the support here and the supports here, um, just trying to kind of put a little bit more support there underneath that bottom to create that, that nice curve is really going to help there. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about light because um, I do talk about it a lot. <laughs> no. um, the the direction of light here, it's it's come it's coming in from probably the opposite angle that it needs to be coming in. So, what you do want to do is have that light come down and fall across that baby's face from this direction. So instead of having it, you know, sort of coming down here, have that light. Um, come across that baby's face because at the moment the light is lighting the, the back of the room between here and in terms of where it's coming in and hitting. So try to control it a little bit more. And what you're going to do is notice that the baby's face will become the brightest part of the image. At the moment, this side of the face is really quite dark compared to the back of the hands and those shins. So the baby's face should be the brightest part of the image and then the light should fall off across the baby so that the, the, the highlights are softer and, um, and you know, you've got those beautiful sort of shadows. The, um, that's pretty much all I really need to, to talk about. Just a little bit more practice with the lighting, um, those skin tones, there's a few sort of magenta tones popping through there in the feet and the hands. But yeah, change the direction of that light, keep working with that wrapping and adjusting those supports. And uh, yeah, the styling's lovely though. All right, we got any questions? Can I have a drink? No questions coming through, but lots of people joining us today. Um, and don't forget that if you, if you know that somebody might be missing out on this, don't forget to tag them. Yeah. Because this is in the group for the group members. Um, so, but you can come back and rewatch it at any time too, so don't forget Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Look at this gorgeous baby. 
I do love um, expression on awake babies and capturing that. I have no doubt that the parents will absolutely love this. And you know, wrapping a little one like this and keeping them in a tight ball is not easy um, when they're awake like this because they don't have any control over their little arms and legs and they can be quite strong so they can kick out very easily. So great job styling, great job. Um, the one thing that I'm kind of looking at here is just those skin tones. There, there's sort of a few sort of red tones in here. If we have a look at the overall exposure here, this baby's got nice creamy skin. Let's take it into our histogram, click on the little hand. So you can see there, if these are your whites and these are your blacks and these are your mid-tones, um, you know, all the information here um, in the file, it should represent what you, you basically see in terms of when you look at this baby, it's going to have beautiful creamy skin. Up here, it's got beautiful creamy skin. So you can see where that information is sitting. It's over here. Um, a lot of this information is obviously going to be the darker area. But if we start to move um, the dropper around, that's, those skin tones in some of these areas are really quite underexposed. So if that light is coming in from the left there and falling across the baby, perhaps controlling that light a little more um, would really benefit this because I can see that the, the baby's face down here is quite underexposed in terms of its true skin tone. That information should all be sitting up here, um, especially because the light is hitting the baby's face first. It's just unfortunately, it looks like it's hitting more of the top of the head up here as opposed to the bottom of the face here. So if we go over to our little lighting diagram, At the moment, is that, uh, yeah. oh, hang on, let me, <laughs> I'm just trying to do it in a way that it's going to make it easy yeah. for people to see, so. And it's backwards from where you are. Yeah, so. it is. in and it's kind of hitting the top of the head. What you need to do is either move the baby further around. I'm not See, sitting on it. <laughs> All right. Um, my jacket may have gone over the mark. That's better. Now. Have we got sound? Let us know. Could you repeat what you are saying now? The sound is gone. Hi, Kelly, watching from Alberta, Canada. Just bring it up from here. Okay, let's just double check that sound. Okay, something has happened. And how's that? All right, can you guys hear me now? 
give us a, uh, a thumbs up good thanks okay great so if it does drop in and out again just let us know I'll try and speak nice and clearly <laughs> so that you can hear me are we good we can hear fantastic all right so yeah just being careful of that direction of light like I was saying I can see that the light is coming down here and then I went on to say for anyone that missed it um, just the skin softening and the over processing of skin so when we um, use different things like that and when we're sharpening the face we've got to be careful of how it is affecting the skin so when I zoom in we're seeing you know um, a little sort of uh, a bit of over softening and then you can see this over sharpening here around the lip as well on those edges so be very careful when you are sharpening not to over sharpen that information because the photo has been um, you know the focus has been you've nailed that in camera you shouldn't have to over sharpen it too much but what happens when we do sharpen our images when we're using furs and things like this you can see looks really kind of wiry now because of the way that it's been sharpened so I would add a mask and remove that from areas that don't need to be sharped keep that nice and soft but yeah love the styling composition looks great as well alrighty oh. look at this beautiful floral background and see a lot of people have been photographing their kids during isolation <laughs> it is such a great way to practice and just keep perfecting those camera skills over and over again do you know I love the, the the beautiful tones in this and the background the one thing I'm kind of looking at is I'm, I'm looking for the same tones that are in the dress to be in the background and just to sort of have it gel as to why that dress was chosen for that background that scene that setup so when you're going with something really elaborate like this and the dominant color here are those beautiful reds and and golds then i probably would have styled it along those lines to to really kind of bring it together the um and you could easily change the color of of this particular dress as well it would be um but just to kind of show you what i mean um where is my color change action This is the demo, demo model. Trust me to click on the demo one. <laughs> Alrighty, so if we, let's get rid of that. And we'll double click on this one and let's pick some of these kind of goldy, maybe these goldy tones in here. Now, if you were to um, paint this on over the dress, and I'm just gonna do this ridiculously fast. Now, this is just changing the color at the moment. We've not changed how dark it is or anything. But this is just obviously what I see. But you've got all these beautiful rich tones in the background, and then you've got this muted tone dress. So when it comes to styling, And obviously I'm just trying to do this really fast just to give you an idea. Okay. Um, darkening that down so it wasn't so bright and then you're starting to match some of the tones in the background so now if we sort of zoom out and you look at it from here so you can't see all those painting on imperfections if we take a little screenshot we've got the gray which is kind of coming up here and then we've got these beautiful golds which is really going to bring out those gold tones in the background so you could have a lot of fun with that changing that color to absolutely anything but that's just an idea for me when i when i go to the trouble of styling a background like this and using all of those tones i want every element throughout the composition to really kind of work together with that 
The other thing is that she looks like she's standing on a little bit of a lean, so not straight within the frame. Um, oops, hang on. So possibly just straightening her up a little bit and that arm just looks a little stiff there, so maybe a bit more, um, a bit more in terms of posing with those hands because we're kind of losing the back hand over here. We, we're sort of seeing it, but we're not really seeing it. And then this one just looks really straight and stiff, but her expression looks really soft and delicate. So do you know what? If I would love to see you do this again and really complementing the color palette that you've got in the background. She looks like she's got a lot of hair if, and you've got beautiful wavy shapes here in the background. If you could do something with that hair and have it kind of coming down and filling that space, complementing the, the style of the dress, um, I reckon you could create something so different with impact. You know, the light looks great as well. Let's have a little look in here at these catch lights. You know, I can see that light coming in and then we've got a little bit of a, a highlight down here. I'm not quite sure what that is, trying to have a little look there in terms of this um, light, but I can see you've got your light here, but then we've got something down below here, whether that's a reflector or if the light is hitting the floor and the floor is bouncing up and creating those highlights. Just be careful that it doesn't, you know, bring too many highlights up underneath that nose and obviously around that neck area, because if that light's coming in from that one direction, shouldn't really need to bounce light from up from here but you could potentially need to bounce light in from over here to fill some of those shadows so just be careful where that um, extra bit of light is bouncing in from but yeah she's gorgeous that background is gorgeous i love the time and effort that you've put into that and i really want to see more <laughs> being greedy <laughs> <laughs> all right look at that baby okay um, this is such a sweet expression and she's really intrigued with the camera. I can see that there's something, it's like a painterly effect that's been done here in, um, in post-production. Just be careful that um, it doesn't become, I suppose it's, it's you know, too blurry and, and taking away too much information because at the moment, let's, let's look at this with, and, and sort of think about it from a perspective of it's just been captured. Right now, before any things have been done in post-production, right now we've got the light coming in from the side and hitting the side of the baby's face. You can see that here in the catch light. There's a one catch light here, but unfortunately because that light's coming in so side on at a 90 degree angle to that baby's face, it's going to only light the bits that it's going to come across and fall. So it's not really lighting the other eye. There's a tiny little bit of light there, but it's not really adding that, you know, that matching catch light, which is what we want to see. So this is where you need to bring that light source around a little more. If it's a window light, turn the baby on an angle, on a 45 degree angle towards that light source, and that'll really benefit you. You know, I love the fact that you've gone to the, you know, putting different elements around the baby and things like that, but with the, the texture and the, the painterly effect that's been added in post, you can't really see what that is. So it's there, but it's not. Um, it's either got to be there or it doesn't need to be there at all. You know what? And I would have, um, because we've got a light background and then a dark background and it kind of cuts straight through our baby, you know, extending the darker background up behind the baby so the baby really stands out and it's not competing for attention in terms of the contrast between the light and the dark backgrounds. Um, it's going to really benefit this image as well. De definitely posing that baby towards that light source or moving the light if it's artificial um, and having a look at that, that sort of distracting background and then also just in terms of that exposure, you've really pushed some of those highlights in the, in the little one's face there. So if we hold that alt key in and we have a look at where those highlights are, you can see it's quite a few that have been overexposed in the little outfit and then you've got some overexposed highlights here um, just on the baby's face there. Now let me get this guide to work. It's being a bit funny. There we go. So you can see right there where you're gonna to start to lose information in terms of those tones in the baby's face. It's very hard to save that information. Once it's gone, it's gone. You can bring it down so the exposure, so the, um, 
Okay, so if we come in and we have a little look here, there's not a lot of information here. And I can see that, you know, we can see there's information here, there's information over here, but there's not a lot of information or detail right here in this particular area. In curves, you can bring down your exposure and you can move that information so that it's no longer hitting the end of your histogram. But unfortunately, when you do go to print this photo, it's still not going to print any detail because there's really no detail there. But it's just going to print a, a very flat tone because you've brought that down. So be very careful in terms of your exposure in camera and controlling it. If it's natural light, use something to diffuse it like a sheer curtain, a shower curtain, something like that, soften it. Um, and then, yeah, um, pay attention to that histogram on the back of the thing. And then just some little red skin tones around the baby's face too. Um, and then cropping through hands, either crop it up here or show those hands. That's what we want to see. But I mean, that face is just adorable and those eyelashes, my goodness. And I do love the colors throughout the image. Um, just remove that distracting background and you'll, um, you'll really make that little one stand out. Alrighty. Now Cassie would just like to say a big thank you to you. She's going to take on board all of the advice that you've given. She's excited to create the image again um, using your advice. Uh, so I'm fantastic. pretty sure that was the little girl with the flowers. Perfect. That talking about there. Honestly, that background and Cassie is just absolutely stunning. And um, yeah, I really want to see what you come up with next. Alrighty, okay, composition, we've got the baby in the middle of the frame, you can see that we've used a lot of sort of different elements here to kind of um, come together and style this, unfortunately it's just all very distracting. Um, for me this is a photograph of a pile of chul with a baby in the middle of it. What I would love to see is that chul possibly extended over the background so that you remove the dark background and it's just all about that baby. Uh, to kind of give you an idea, let's have a little play here. Let's make that baby a little bigger in the frame because at the moment they're a bit small, getting lost. Alrighty. So I'm gonna be a bit naughty here. Um, close your eyes everyone just for a moment. <laughs> Is this a do what I say, not what I do moment? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. Let's go with it. Okay. So this is just to give you an idea about how those dark backgrounds can impact the composition in terms of distracting elements. Okay, so take a snapshot. Now we have a baby in the middle of a, of a background. Now we have a big black background with a baby somewhere in there. <laughs> so when you remove the dark elements and the, now the baby is sort of the darker area there, that's a photograph of a baby. But over here, it's a photograph of a circular shape of chul with a baby in the middle of it and a very dark background behind it if that makes sense. So when you use light, um, when you use light areas or uh, materials and things like that, with darker areas, you will create contrast. It's very distracting. Your eye is continually drawn to it. And then this gorgeous little baby is completely lost in the middle of it. So I hope I'm not offending you, but just I was just trying to show how you could remove that distraction and bring the baby to the forefront of this frame so it is a photograph of the baby. We've got to remember that as photographers, when our clients come to us, they're paying us for a product and service. They want their baby photographed so they can remember it. So always try to remember that when you're styling your photographs, when you're creating these setups. Um, sometimes little things that we add to the photographs, we might think that they're going to look great, we might take the photograph and go, yep, that's good. Um, but then later on, years down the track, when we come back to look at it, 
how is that that element that was in that photo you know how is that reminded them of how small their baby was how beautiful their baby was all of those little features that's what they're coming to you for we've got to remember that so let's have a little look here at the baby here in the center you can see you've gone to a lot of um, a lot of trouble to kind of you know style it you've even um, placed the little fingers together like that and stuff like that that's all great unfortunately you can be really good at styling and placing and, and, and putting fingers and things like that together but unless that exposure and that lighting um, has been captured right it's it's really going to make or break a photograph so if we have a look at the direction of the light that is coming in you can clearly see that it's coming straight up in this direction and highlighting underneath the baby's nose and when babies have got darker skin like this and you highlight those areas they tend to stand out even more so um, unfortunately it also will create some darker shadows around the eyes and these are unflattering when we get um, the the exposure wrong as well we can really start to mess up with the um, the skin tones too so there's just some really sort of cooler tones magenta tones coming through in those hands and feet so warming those up a bit too the um, the other thing that I'm just going to mention here is that because there is so much going on let's zoom back out when you are focusing on something in camera your camera is going to focus on the highest contrasting area if you haven't toggled that focal point and you've not moved it exactly where you want it which should be on this eye your, your camera is going to focus on something else that's that's higher contrasting that's going to to grab its attention closest to the focal point that you've selected so this is why when i'm photographing a, a big setup like potentially like this i've got my single point focus on and that's where I can move it and I can tell my camera this is where I want to focus I'm not selecting multiple focal points for it to focus elsewhere so we do have to be careful in terms of that focus because if we zoom in to this little one you can see that the eye is very soft there so we've not focused on on the eye um, when we start to move around the image we start to see what is sharp and unfortunately the tool over here is the sharpest part of the image so you've got to make sure you nail that exposure in terms of um, uh, composition, um, lighting, focus, everything. Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, just be careful. And little things like the bow on top of the head, it's, it's probably not really necessary because you've got so much going on around it. Um, when we think about using different colors, different things to style the baby with whether it be headbands or hats or whatever it is just remember that if you're thinking of putting something on a baby to make someone aware of the fact that it's a girl or a boy you're probably only doing it with the I suppose the intention of someone that doesn't know who that baby is is going to look at it and be unsure whether it's a boy or a girl but I can assure you that a parent looking at a photograph of their baby is not going to care whether it's wearing a headband to identify it with being a little baby girl in blues or greens or whatever it is so always remember you are taking photographs for your clients um, regardless of what anyone else thinks it's none of their business you photograph for your client and style for your client and then you will create photographs that they love and then they're gonna pay you oh my god this squishy face look at that all right I do love a good black and white <laughs> <laughs> okay so composition you know I love the the close up here the baby is the main focus of this frame you know you've got um, great highlights some shadows here in this black and white the one thing that's kind of really standing out here for me is obviously the baby but I keep being drawn down to this bright area in the front uh, we've got some darker areas off to the side here 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 and here so if a vignette has been added and it's darkened down those corners or if that's a lens vignette you know you can soften that um, in camera raw uh, or you could obviously um, soften those those darker areas if you've added a vignette um, in post the thing is that 
it's it's created this lighter area down here that is competing for attention of that baby's face so it's almost like it's mirrored because the brightest part is there and then you've got the brightest part there so try to to sort of control those those areas i mean if we look at just darkening down that foreground there Not that much, people. <laughs> but if we bring it back just a little bit, and I'm done it really rough. Oops. Take it off the baby's hands. And now the baby stands out, and you've got that consistency around the subject. So just removing that highlight in the front. It's still there, but that baby's face now is all that you can see. Um, the only other kind of little thing that I'm going to pick up on here is just with where that light is coming through on the baby, you can see just that little chin under there is just a bit darker than everywhere else. So possibly turning the baby's face around a bit more, controlling the brightness of, you know, the, the back of the arms here because they are brighter than the bottom half of the baby's face. So, so just be careful there. You could, you know, adjust that with some curves. Um, as well but yeah your focus is lovely your um, composition is great the supports underneath the baby you can see it looks quite soft and it sort of looks like the posing bag is going down over here um, just make sure you know your blankets are pulled nice and tight and they're going to give you that nice sort of um, seamless background that you're looking for oh that face oh Gosh. how cute mm -hmm. oh my goodness Alrighty, um, that baby is absolutely gorgeous. So a couple of things, we've got this beautiful round face, we've got a round prop, and then we've got some really straight lines. Um, so when you're using round props, try to continue everything to go in that beautiful circular shape to follow the, the curves of, of that prop. Um, as well so yeah but I do love the the way that the the baby is in the center of the frame there um, and it is grabbing your attention it's just when you come into that baby's face your eye kind of darts back here and it falls down and then it kind of comes down and it comes back up here and it's there's so many different textures going on in such a simple photograph so if we have a look we've got texture here We've got you know, a pattern and a sort of texture back here and then we've got a very busy texture here and we've got one here and then we've got a very flat background. So in terms of styling, just be careful with the amount of texture that you are adding into your frame and, um, and whether or not they are complementing each other. So I would be looking for something really soft. Do you know, with the one little thing that would potentially help this is, you know, I would have probably had this here right up inside so tucked get rid of get rid of that altogether that doesn't even need to be there but this little textured blanket that little bit of texture would be great if it was just tucked in and it followed when I said before follow the shape of the bowl so tuck that in so you can't see it it's the nice soft support that the baby needs to be laying on and then you eliminate that so this is just for next time um, and then with the the blanket in the background you know it's it's got some sort of um, some straight lines and, and things coming down here and here you could soften that with the way that you position that um, but what I would also do here is potentially color change the um, the wrap at the back to match the the foreground the, the the color tone of that foreground so you could easily do that with my color change action um, and just to sort of show you here really quickly just changing the color so that it all goes together is going to um, benefit that um, oh, so much more yeah mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is just be careful with that direction of light because it just if we have a look at the shadows you know we've got sort of a bright area over here hang on a minute two seconds get it right Kelly mm -hmm. come back Alrighty, 
So, you know, we've got a really bright area over here on the floor and you can see these little highlights here on the baby where that light is sort of coming through and, and hitting the, the top of the baby's face here. But, you know, it sort of falls off to become a little kind of gray over to the other side of the photograph. So just turning that baby a little more towards that light source um, and you're going to have, you know, some more light coming across that face because at the moment it's just looking a little soft. It probably just needs that little bit more um, punch in terms of the, the contrast on that baby's face. The brightest part obviously up there um, on the baby with the direction of that light hitting that. So just turning that baby a bit more so it falls more across the face and you will see big changes. Danielle's told us to stop getting clucky when we saw that baby's face. <laughs> <We're so good. laughs> All right. Okay, so we've got a family portrait. I'm guessing these are someone's kids that they've uh, used the opportunity with being at home to capture. And you know, I love all of their expressions. It's uh, it's such a fun a fun photo, you know. And you can see their different personalities. I think that's great. The one thing that you do need to be careful of is obviously their their clothes and the styling here. You know, he's he's not doing too bad here with his blue jumper and that background matching it's going really well I would probably just have um, continued to get them to wear something that was probably a little bit more um, suitable for that style of background and that color and all the different logos are really distracting so that's one of my rules when I'm photographing my own kids and I'm photographing other people's kids is that no logos or busy patterns because the first thing I saw when I looked at this photograph was that and it's the brightest part of the image and it's got big bold text and it's red <laughs> the next thing I saw was that um, so it's great to practice and capture these moments but do you know what this could have been a beautiful stunning portrait on your wall so go that one step further get them to to um, you know, change their outfits a little more. Now he's looking really tall, and I'm guessing he loves being taller than his. And someone's read their said cousins. Um, the um, the thing is, when they 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 do stand, they look disconnected. So I know he's probably wanting to be taller, but just get him to spread his legs a little more, bring him down so he's not so much higher, and then you're going to have um, a better shape there in terms of that. Posing, you know, they look comfortable, look relaxed. I don't think he needs to have his hand on his hips there, possibly in his pocket. You've kind of cropped through their arms, so um, having his hand there is, is a little bit distracting as well. In terms of the lighting, um, it is a little soft. It's not too bad. It's, a, you know, in terms of being flat, it probably just needs a little bit more um, uh, contrast in there as well. But yeah, exposure, you've done well. Next thing I'd probably look at are those skin tones. His skin tones are looking a little cool over here. Um, so in post-production, you can warm those up so they match the, the girls there and, and so forth. But um, I love that you've taken the opportunity to, to do something. Be very careful, I'm oh, sorry, do something during this time. Be very careful though when you are editing your backgrounds. You can see around the girls here, there's a highlight, like a little bit of a halo effect here. So when you're darkening down backgrounds and working on textures and things like that, always make sure you zoom in and zoom out to have a look at where you are creating some halo. There's even a little bit of a dark sort of area there as well. Um, but it's got to be consistent throughout the entire image. But yeah, good job. Oh, this is a little dark and moody. Oh wow. Now I'm, I do love dark and moody, don't get me wrong. I think it, it shares great impact um, and, it, and it adds to the storytelling of that moment that the photograph was captured. So a few things to, to really be careful of when you're going for that dark moody look is obviously to not underexpose all of your, your shadows um, obviously you're going to have some areas that will be black but when you're losing complete detail in some areas uh, it's not going to, to benefit the, the image. Um, sort of, we get her arm, it's come in here but then we lose the hand. Um, and we've sort of got the baby's arm to here and then we're starting to lose some of the detail in there. 
the, the highlight on the nose here and the cheeks is just that little bit too bright as well. And, um, and we, we can see what she's sitting in, which I love, but we start to really lose it down here. So just a little bit more attention to your exposure and you will um, notice a huge change. Also, when, we, when it comes to composition, um, she's not quite in the center of the frame. So with a chair like this, I'd probably sort of have it really centered in terms of distance from here to here and distance from there to there. And um, I would have probably just had her sit back a little bit more so her head was here and the baby's head was here. So they were both within the center of that frame, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the styling, I can see that you've put a lot of attention into the styling of this and the positioning and I love that moody light. We, we can see that it's a baby, but we are losing that baby's face. So even having that baby's face um, turned up a little bit more, you, you can still have that connection with its mother, but you'll start to see the outline, um, the side profile outline of that little one's face, which is just gonna add to the story and the connection between mum and bub. Um, when we look at the loss in detail here in the shadowy areas, you can see, hang on, wait for my computer to catch up. There we go. It's trying. It's trying really hard. <laughs> Even try the um, show clipping um, tick box. See okay, there we, go. there we go. So you can see all of the white areas of you know, it's, it's where we're sort of really lacking in, in, um, in detail. We've got those, the black areas there where we're sort of um, really losing a lot of that information as well. I can see there's a PowerPoint down on the ground, but this is such a great way for you to check your own files and just keep an eye on that histogram in camera. When you're going dark and moody like this, have a look at that histogram. If you really wanna underexpose it, Use the histogram to control where you place that information within the frame. Um, All right. Jaseep's got a question there about you know black backgrounds. You know, is it necessary always to give separation to the subject in the background? If you are wearing, if you have someone in your photograph that's wearing black and they're on a black background, if you lose the separation between the black that they're wearing in the background, you're going to make it look like there's floating heads and arms. So. For me, I tend to move my subject away from my background so that they are closest to the light source if I wanted to have a beautiful black background, but it is all up to you. It's just making sure that your camera captures how you visually in, you know, want to interpret the scene. How, what do you want to bring to life? What do you want to share and show? So sometimes when we get the exposure wrong in terms of the lighting and the capture, then that can impact how we interpret that photograph. All right. Cool. Okay, look at this. I do love different. Hang on, let me go back to my little brush tool. All righty. Oh, look at this hair. This is so cool. I love it when maternity clients are up for something a little different. Okay, so I do really enjoy things like this. Um, you know, you've got the, the shapes up here, and for me, they're kind of, you know, sort of mimicking, I suppose, her body. If you think, you know, you've got the head, you've got the belly and, and so forth, um, or you've got the head, the breast, and the belly, or just the, the general overall shape and, and curve of the body. So, you know, she's got round shape up there. She's got a beautiful round face, like she's gorgeous. And then you've got this round belly. What we're probably seeing here is um, when, when you look at the shape of the belly, it's lovely. I, I do really enjoy it. You're seeing a very sort of long portrait, right? It goes from the top to the bottom. The, these are obviously um, adding to it. But then it's kind of cut short down here and then we've cropped it in really quite tight to the top as well. So it's sort of a bit constrained, I suppose, within this frame. So I suppose what I would probably be doing is stepping back a little further 
and giving a little bit more space to this particular image. And if you're gonna go with something like this on top of the head, try to mimic the pose to match it and, and really kind of bring that shape um, and that design element to life within her. So she's in a very standard maternity pose, which is really lovely, but she's probably just a little bit too rounded here. And I can see that you've had to come up a little higher to make sure that you've got these in place. So what I would have done is probably, um, you know, taken a step back, had her turn a little bit more side on so that I could see more of the shape of the belly coming out here and then more of the shape coming down here um, in terms of her back. And then what that would do is slim this leg because at the moment this leg is looking really quite wide and it's not going to be very flattering because she doesn't look wide until we get down to here in terms of how big that area there is in comparison to her belly. So when we start to turn them in, in the pose, we can slim them down a little bit more. Also what's happening, I can see where the belly comes in here and it follows around here. And then we've sort of got this little bit that sort of drops down there. When you turn them and you bring that leg up, you eliminate that gap there and it's all round. There's nothing else there. And it's gonna mimic the shapes of the balls up here. And as well, she's quite sort of square on here to the camera. If you turned her side on and then her head back to the camera, you're going to then have more shape. And that's going to mimic this. See that? Mm. Breast, belly, thigh. Breast, belly, thigh thigh you want to mimic the shape that you've created up there if you're going to go to that much trouble so if you can do this again if you can get her back in gosh I would love to see that absolutely but it's it's you know when you start to kind of play with different um, shapes and things like that it's great to, to obviously present something that is so different but you do need to be um, you know willing to take it that one step further to really create something that is different and unique don't be too safe all the time but follow it and get your safe shot show her that one that's gonna be great she's gonna love it but then have a little bit more fun the other thing is when we look at this exposure it is really quite bright so we've really got to look for that line of the belly on and the arm there with the background the background is brighter than obviously the the, um, the person in the photograph there we go so you can just see there's some of the highlights, um, obviously in the flower in her hair and across her chest and just at the top of her belly under her arm. There's going to be very little detail there and that's why that separation is so hard. So just to control that a little bit more, but I do really enjoy seeing different things like that and um, I wanna continue seeing it. All right, okay. Oh, we've only got a few left. On the home stretch, three images to go. Oh uh, gosh. You know, great job with the styling and the wrapping here. I think you've done a really, really great job. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the baby is sort of falling or is going to fall. The camera angle is really not making me feel like that baby is, um, obviously I know that where that baby's laying and it's safe, but it just looks like it's, it's heading downwards. Um, so be careful because when someone looks at your images, you're going to make them feel a certain way. So what I would potentially have done in this instance is um, brought up that baby's face, but moved your body down lower. So if we go over here to our little um, model, so at the moment, and the baby's sort of wrapped somewhat the same, at the moment I can see that your camera angle's kind of up here, coming down over the baby. And what I would highly recommend is just playing with your camera angles and, and moving your body. Coming down a little lower here, so you can see that angle, it's from a slightly higher perspective. And then if you rotate your camera, you're gonna rotate the baby's head a little higher in the frame as well. So come down a little lower and you're gonna be more square on, because at the moment, you know, you're kind of looking down and um, the baby's face is coming down in this direction. So if you come down lower, 
the baby's face will be then more square onto your your camera and that's ultimately what you want to um, try and achieve uh, the other thing like just rotating your camera and lifting that baby's face up a little bit higher it's um, then the body is also going to change that but yeah getting your body down lower will also really benefit that the other thing when we look at the direction of light again you can see where that light is falling where those shadows are so we've got shadows coming up behind the baby and you can see you know the wrap is really quite bright with where it's hitting it you've got some highlights coming up you know underneath this um, nose we're highlighting these areas and then and darkening these areas which is that ghouls lighting so if you bring the light down this way across the baby's face so let's zoom back out um, get rid of those if you have the light over here falling across the baby then the baby's face will be the brightest part not the wrap so the wrap is the brightest because the lights coming in and hitting it first before it gets to the baby's face so direct that light from the top of the baby's face down across in that 45 degree angle and you will notice a huge difference because the posing's great, the styling's great, just perfect that direction of light. That's why I created my lighting tutorial. Um, and I'm not even trying to sell it, I created it to, to explain how to get it right, um, to help people because it's a common thing that I see all the time. So yeah, that's pretty much it with that photograph. Otherwise it's, you know, you change your camera angle, change the direction of light and you will be amazed at the results. Alrighty, oh, Bobby. It's almost like a little teeny tiny smirk there. Okay, again, camera angle. At the moment, I can see you're standing here and shooting that baby, move your body and shoot from over here. So the head is the closest part of um, the baby to the camera. And when we look at the size of the baby's head to the rest of the baby's body, it looks kind of a bit small. And you can start to see, you know, some areas down here that you don't really need to see, especially here. If you move your body over here and you're shooting your camera here, um, you're not gonna see this because the baby's body is going to um, hide all of that so come up a little higher and shoot down across that baby's face and you will again see a huge difference just be careful with where you're placing um, you know your supports here and with that fabric coming up I can see it's kind of coming up quite high there if you come up a little higher and obviously change your camera angle you will eliminate what looks like this sort of wall of, of fabric coming up in front of the baby's face there too um, exposure looks pretty good the lights probably just a little bit flat um, but yeah a little bit more um, feathering the background up here is brighter than the baby's um, than the foreground over here sorry so be careful with that I know it's hard when you're photographing creams that are brighter than the skin tones um, but yeah just changing the direction of that light a little bit more so what I mean at the moment is that it looks like it's kind of coming across and it's falling on the baby like that. What you want to do is bump up maybe the output of your light, feather it, so the light is gonna fall across the baby's face like over here and across the foreground and not across the background behind the baby lighting it. But yeah, you know, um, wrapping, probably just a little bit of perfecting. He looks like a big baby. So I'm guessing those little hands needed to be wrapped in there. Um, <laughs> and you can see that that's where the arms are. What I tend to do when I'm wrapping them is once I get them to sleep and he's asleep now, you, or she, I'm sorry, he or she, um, then you can peel back a little bit of that wrap, maybe expose those fingers there if you, if you can to kind of bring those out so you can see both arms and legs. Last image. Oh gosh. Yeah, so the first thing you obviously see, well the first thing I did see when I came in was this and then I kind of went down here and I followed it around and then I saw the baby. So he's got some really great design elements on him. Um, unfortunately, the brightest part of the image is here and and then the, de the design grabbed my eye Make your brush a little bit bigger. Oh, make my brush a bit bigger. Yeah, sorry. 
So yeah, brightest part of the image and then my eye was brought down here and then up into the baby. So when we are photographing a subject like this, have a look at it, go right, what is it that I want to capture here? Obviously the connection, that's the photograph right there, right? So everything else is really not necessary. We can only barely see that he's wearing a pair of jeans down here, so get rid of them, crop it out. Um, I would crop through the elbow and not obviously through that little um, seam there. But I would also have him positioned in a way that lifted his chin just a bit higher so he wasn't so bent over. And then I would direct my light so that it was coming in and falling across this area here. The thing when you're photographing dads and their babies, it's sometimes they are a little awkward with the way that they hold them because you know they've got big hands and these teeny tiny little babies and babies aren't always the easiest to hold when they're awake and naked. Their skin's very soft and delicate, but you can you know this gentle touch that he's got here is just lovely. So I would really if you can photograph this person again, um, you know, or in the future, if you're photographing someone with tattoos and things like that, try not to light areas that aren't necessary to the photograph. So this bit here is, you know, we don't need this. You can see that there's letters there, but then don't add to the photograph because we don't really know what that says. Um, his face is very dark because, you know, the top of his head's being lit and his shoulders being lit. I'm guessing that light is coming in you know, quite high and, and sort of straight down here, um, sort of behind the photographer. So I would have turned them on more of an angle towards that light so it came in from more of this direction and then just had his chin up a little bit higher. And if you can, get that baby up higher. The, um, the other area, you know, and I don't like picking at dads, but the other area that I would have tried to cover is this area here. It doesn't need to be there. It's not adding to the photograph. This is the photograph. So bring the baby over um, more on the chest or have that arm come across more like this to hold that baby to kind of remove a lot of these brighter other areas that just aren't necessary and are competing for attention. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, you know, ha have a look at that. Your black and white conversion is good. You've got, you know, highlights and, and shadows and it's not sort of flat looking, it's got great punch, it's just the direction of that light and the, just perfecting that pose a little bit more and the uh, the crop. So yeah, when I talk about crop, I talk about getting rid of everything that doesn't need to be there. And if he was turned a little bit more on a 45 degree angle, you would not see any of this. You'd see more of his face and more of that baby and more of the embrace, which is what it's about. So yeah, so get rid of everything that's not meant to be there and, um, and you'll see a huge difference, that's for sure. But I do love that beautiful, beautiful embrace. Photographing dads with their babies is something I absolutely love doing. All right, so 20 images, wow. <laughs> she was five weeks old. Oh wow! So yeah, photographing five-week-old baby. Honestly, um, it's it can be a hit and miss because I photograph five-week-old babies that have been awake the entire session, and then some that have slept the entire session. So sometimes just wrapping them up, keeping them nice and comfortable, um, is going to help them obviously go off into a nice sleep. But yeah, I tend to wrap first with older babies. That's for sure. What would be the ethical use? the photo of a baby with breast, especially on movie. Um, I'm not quite sure the, the, the question there, that's a, a little confusing and without seeing the photograph, but when it comes to breastfeeding, it, it's not for me personally, and this is my interpretation of creating a beautiful breastfeeding photograph, it's not about the actual breast in the mouth for me. Breastfeeding is about the connection between a mother and a baby. So it's about the gentle embrace. It's about the way that a mother holds her baby when she feeds it. It's a, about the way that they either are gazing at each other or the mother is gazing at her baby. It's all about connection and that's what we've got to focus on as photographers. We want to create impact and we want to tell a story. And you do that through light, through pose, and through your, you know, the way that you communicate and bring 
bring your subjects to life within a frame. That's what it's about. So yeah. Um, so yeah, oh, baby's breast. I mean, if you can see the baby and it's naked, that's fine. Just it's it's important not to show things that aren't necessary. Pose a baby in a way that shows and draws attention to the main part of the photograph. So it's it's about the mother and baby connection. All of those things don't need to be there. Use beautiful wraps and clothes and um, and things like that to to hide anything that doesn't need to be there. But yes, it's, um, yeah. All right, so moving on, we had 20 amazing photographs. Thank you to everyone that submitted. I know it's not easy putting your photographs out there. And, and obviously I'm sharing with you my opinions. And sometimes people wanna take them on board and sometimes people don't wanna take them on board. But for all of the other technical terms that we've talked about in terms of composition, posing, lighting, and exposure, they're things that I really do want you to take on board because they're the things that are going to help take your photographs to a whole new level. And this is the thing, we, I, I commented on a post this morning about you know learning and it takes a long time for you to get to where you really want to go but you don't ever stop learning in your journey as a photographer. You continually want to push yourself and you are only as good as your last photograph and you've got to remember that. Um, everyone learns differently, like I said earlier um, at the beginning of this, but we also are going to learn at a different pace based on you know, um, the impact of everything else that's going on around us in our own life. So don't ever compare yourself to someone else. Don't ever feel deflated that you didn't get it right because I just said to my son this morning when I was helping him with his geography assignment and he was getting cranky at me. And I'm like, dude, it's okay. You don't know what you don't know. I'm here to help you. So once upon a time, I didn't know all of this and I learnt it through experience, through trial and error and through education. And that's why I've created this group to share with you information, knowledge and education so that you can become better at your craft because when you all become better at your craft, it doesn't only you know, improve your business and what you create, but it improves the standard of our industry. And across the world, we are an international group. That is my aim. So that people want to hire photographers, so that we can remain employed, so that when we get through this pandemic that we're currently going through, we can hit the ground running, creating beautiful photographs that our clients can't create themselves. That's what it's all about, education and learning and constantly wanting to be better than we were before. I'm never gonna stop pushing myself and I hope you feel the same way. Thank you again for submitting your photographs for this image critique. It has been um, a great session this morning. I'm gonna go, it's Friday. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Our next image critique is June 26th, Friday, June 26th. So put that in your uh, calendar. If you wanna submit a photograph again or if you've just been watching and thinking about submitting a photograph, uh, I will submit a link the day before for you to submit one photograph and uh, I look forward to seeing them all again. Thanks guys, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your time with your family, stay safe.